all that algae. Now, okay, pause that, space. pause that. Back that up a little bit. Okay, all right. I look at that, that is finger way too close. Fire! What's going on Coyote Pack and welcome to an all new series here on the Brave Wilderness channel called Base Camp. Where there will be no camping whatsoever. No camping on this series <laughs> at all. But we do have a campfire, which yeah. is pretty cool. And actually we're filming this series at one of our favorite homes away from home when we're at home, off location, our favorite restaurant in Columbus, Ohio, 101 BK. Which, thank goodness we're not outside because it's a balmy seven degrees today in Columbus, Ohio, guys. So. Yeah. Uh, it is cold out there. Don't want to be filming out there. So, Mark, what is this base camp series going to consist of? So, you know, we wanted to have a, a new show where we can tell you guys a little bit more about what's happening in the Brave Wilderness universe. Like, you know, where we're headed next, what's going on, what shows we're, projects we're working on. Uh, and one of the things we really wanted to do was actually look back at some of our older videos because not only have we not seen them for a while, there's a good chance none of you have seen them at all. Right, so at this point, as of the filming of this video, we've got 9.3 million subscribers. 9.3 million members of the Coyote Pack. And what, over 350 videos? Right? Yeah, yeah, over 300. By the time this comes out, it'll be closer to 360 videos. Right, so everybody out there watching, I have a good feeling that most of you have never scrolled all the way back in the video feed to see the very first episode that we ever released on the Brave Wilderness channel. Yeah, and I mean, I haven't watched some of the older videos in years, so this is gonna be a lot of fun for us too. Right, well, I know that for me, it's always exciting, like if I buy a DVD box set, the first thing I do, since I've already seen the movie many times, is to put in the bonus disc. The bonus disc. Because I wanna see what it took to make that movie, listen to the directors and the actors talking about right. what their experience was making it. So this episode specifically is sort yeah. of one of those director's couches where we're gonna watch actually the first video that ever came out on the Brave Wilderness channel. Do you remember what that was? Uh, it's, uh, diving for Snapping Turtles. Diving for Snapping right. Turtles, that's right. We started the series with My Favorite Animal, which actually isn't the first video we ever shot, but no, ended up being the pilot. That's why I stumbled. I was like, uh, the first one was actually Lake Erie Water Snakes. Right, that's the first one we ever filmed, yeah. but this is the first one that ever came out. So, if you're ready, and you guys are ready, let's literally dive right into this episode and start taking a look at Diving for Snapping Turtles. All right, ready? let's do it. Here we go. Ooh, the ominous disclaimer yeah. on a black screen. Right. I'm Coyote Peterson. Kind of made all the videos feel a little too dark. I think that's why we ended up scrapping underneath the, lily the full this slate lake. disclaimer. Right? Man, that's a quick intro. Wow. That was like 10 seconds. They're like 30 seconds nowadays. We showed nothing other than a turtle tail. Yeah. That's a pretty short video in general. Yeah, yeah. I mean, five minutes and 30 seconds. Monsters. Famous for their incredible Boy, is it packed full of footage. I mean, look at all, these are all different shoots. Since childhood, yeah, if you pay attention, I have like different outfits on in every single shot. Yeah. The Some of these world, I actually have sideburns in. You see, that's when I still had hair. Look at those sideburns. You they still have hair, you just choose not to grow it. Well, I mean, like, just like the sideburns. I didn't even have a beard at that point. For five years now. The team and I have special permissions yeah, to be off man. trail. Thank goodness we had so much B-roll to make this video with. All right. I'm to do today is catch one of these turtles that I've been researching so I can show you guys why this is my favorite reptile. So, I'm getting that shot. All right, I'm rolling. All right, yeah. Coyote, Let's tell us. Let's pause tell us. right there. Okay. So how did you know that jumping off a kayak to catch a snapping turtle was a good idea? I didn't. Is it a good I, idea? I don't think it's, nobody should ever try this, guys. Anybody else? That's why we have the disclaimer. Never jump from a kayak to catch snapping turtles. It's extremely dangerous, but I figured out that I could get through the environment much more stealthily on a kayak than I could. I used to trudge through yeah. the environment hoping to did. bump into a snapping turtle. How many turtle? pairs of waders did we go through? They kept getting like holes poked in them from like the branches underneath the water surface. Right. And we were like, man, this isn't gonna this is, work. This isn't working. And then it became, we were scaring so many of the turtles away. They could feel the environment moving. We'd be like, there goes a turtle and you couldn't catch it. No. And then I actually approached Emotion Kayaks who still sponsor us to this day. And this was the stealth version kayak. It's actually mm -hmm. used for bass fishing and it helps fishermen to sneak in quietly to areas where, you know, then they fish and right. cast their lines and whatnot. And, and you can see it in this shot, actually. You'll, there's a sticker on the side of the kayak that says Swamp Monster. Right. That was a different series that we were developing at, just before we made this mm -hmm. video. 
Um, and actually, that turned into Dragon Tales. It did. Okay. Well, I used to consider my kayak to be like my race car. And I was like, this is a great <laughs> idea. Let's put sponsor stickers all over it. So you have survival straps who used to sponsor yeah. us. There's Emotion Kayaks. There's Sog. There's Keen Footwear. So you've got all these branded names on this kayak. And I was like, yeah. this is a great way to advertise. It's kind of like your stock car. Yeah, I know. All right. right. I keep going? Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Sure? Yeah, keep going. Keep okay. Going. Okay. What are you doing with this kayak? Uh, so I'm going to use the kayak. Okay, pause kayak it right itself. there. Look at my hat. <laughs> this is going well. Look at how big my hat is as compared to now. This is the same exact hat that I was wearing in that episode. And the hat, I think the leather over time from getting wet and getting cooked in the desert mm -hmm. and getting sweaty in a jungle, it is cooked into this shape. How do you mold a hat perfectly? You wear it for three and a half years while filming episodes on the Brave Wilderness. You know, I'm just shocked you haven't lost it yet. You lose so many other things, whether it's a camera or your sunglasses. How many sunglasses have you lost? There are probably 15 pairs of those sunglasses specifically <laughs> at the bottom of Thoreau Lake and in Columbus, Ohio. He's not kidding, guys. Like, he loses sunglasses all the time. There are some days where we actually have to stop a shoot because you didn't have another pair of glasses. You know, and I think I actually made a comment about that in another video at one point, and somebody had written in, and they were a company that makes the tethers. Oh, they yeah. go on the sunglasses, and I was like, uh, I don't want to tether on my sunglasses. I'll just keep losing them, I guess. Mm, probably should, though. I try to remember to take them off and like hook them onto something before I jump in the water, but honestly, I lose them more, I think, when they're hooked onto something than when they're on my actual yeah. face. But, but good job keeping hold of the hat. Yeah, the hat's still here. All right. Close to the turtles. You see how much plant life has already grown in? That means they're hiding under the algae, hiding under the lily pads. If I'm in the kayak, I can kind of coast along the edge of the lily pads. All right, and I'm look standing on a kayak, sitting on a kayak. Establishing shots is mm -hmm. exactly what we were going for that day. Standing on the kayak, I can jump off. Uh, actually, the you know what? Back it up a second there. I, I saw a big no no. We're going back to me losing things. You see that right there? That's a camera sitting in the middle of the kayak. That is. What camera that's a is JV, that? That's a JVC. Is that a JVC? Yeah. Okay, one of our original JVCs. Maybe it's tethered to something, but nowadays, I think we've learned from me jumping off of things with cameras free-floating inside of kayaks, we've lost cameras doing this. Yeah, I think that camera actually ended up getting bit by a snapping turtle to scratch the lens. That's, no, it was an alligator snapping turtle bit that camera and broke through the screen. Oh. In, in Louisiana. That's oh, what happened that's to that. Okay, yeah. So I didn't lose that camera, but I have lost cameras by having them set on kayaks. Okay, keep rolling the footage. They're up towards the surface, hunting for fish and tablets. That's acting this right there, you see that? That's B-roll shots of me kayak, looking for turtles. I don't think we even owned a GoPro at this point. That was a no, drift camera. No, we were using drift cameras right, at this point. Luck, finding yeah. ourselves a mud dragon. Yeah, you have the Bear Grylls stands on. Yeah, those are my Bear Grylls crack hoppers right there. We still wear crack hoppers today. Well, yep. sure, that no harm comes to me or the reptile. There the glasses go back on. Now the glasses are not to look cool, just so you guys know. It actually helps me cut through the glare on the water surface. They're polarized. So I can actually see the turtles moving okay. beneath the surface. I'm gonna pause it right there because yeah. this you, you, this was the critical moment. This yeah. is where the episode actually started. This is what we actually used to shoot on, guys. This was the workhorse for Brave Wilderness, our first camera. The Canon XA20. Which is still an awesome camera. Not Great 4K. Camera for anyone starting. Not no, 4K. Definitely not 4K. But you can see I was sort of setting up here to get a focus pool, and I, I missed you. A little bit, so I was about to yell back to one because we, we didn't have very much money back then, guys. We didn't have walkie talkies or right. anything, so um, I was about to yell back to one, but then I realized that oh no, he's he's seen something. He's well, not, he's not gonna just get a B roll shot right here. I was supposed to start here yeah, and right. go this way. You mm -hmm. were gonna focus pull through these grasses. I mean, we, yeah. we had a conversation about the shot Mark was getting. And I remember standing on the kayak, and I'm always looking, right, for something moving in the environment. And all of a sudden, I see the, the algae. When a turtle moves beneath it, the turtle actually grabs onto the algae with the shape of its body. You could see that algae pulling. And then all of a sudden, the lily pads are moving. I was like, man, this looks like it's a big turtle. You can yeah. see the focus on my face. You may have even been saying something to me at this point. Maybe we cut off the audio. But I clearly start moving in this direction, and then, well, play yeah. it, and you'll, you'll see what happens. And then here's a signal. I was like, all right, he's, he's going for something. I'm just going to roll with this. Camera's all shaky. Yeah. Oh, I got it. It's a big turtle. What's funny about that jump and catch is I didn't realize how deep the water was. My oh, feet my gosh, actually hit is. the turtle when yeah, I jumped into the water. On, like, I couldn't actually see the turtle. So as I went in, I remember, like, my toe nicking the back of its shell. And that's that moment where you're like, oh my gosh, I thought it was a lot shallower than it was. And the water was like up to my chest as I'm holding onto the, the back of this turtle, turtle sinking in the mud. The I'm just happy you caught a really big turtle because I was like, man, if he pulls up a, a little painted turtle yeah. and ruin the shoot. And now I'm all muddy and wet. <laughs> yeah. 
And the thing about it is that this isn't just a big turtle. Right this is the wow. biggest common snapping right. turtle still to this day That's that I've ever caught. As close as you want to get your face. And the lighting in this episode is bad. Turtle. Yeah. Look at but I think claws. we we were going to re think about reshooting this episode, but we we're like, man, we're not going to catch turtles. Like, that, that's that's the one. That is true. That is true. Yeah. I'll, pause, I'll pause it right there. And what's interesting about this moment is that, you know, just your instinct as a director is like, okay, he clearly has a turtle. Let's just roll with this. Worst case, it's going to become, you know, more B-roll shots. See that guy's instinct. I just went straight into presentation mode. I knew it the moment that I pulled the turtle up out of the water. I'm like, this mm -hmm. is, I don't think I said it at that point. I was like, this is the biggest snap turtle I've ever caught. We're just going to run with this. And there was, there was no cutting here. Like no. there, there was cutting in the episode. We did jump cuts, but we literally ran the take for about 15 minutes of just me blabbering on about everything I could think of to talk about when it came to snapping turtles. Right. Speaking of blabbering, can we watch the video? Yeah, let's keep, keep watching. Such claws, a big turtle! Look at those big claws. Daddy. Now, I don't go in you know, pond one thing I don't get to ask you is yeah, when you're in this situation, his head. His head is like the size are you nervous at all? Like, cause he's saying, your, right, now, go your ahead. attention's not really on the dangerous closer, animal you're holding completely. Make dinner of it. Um, these I have right now, this sort of understanding when it comes to snapping fish, turtles where I'm always apples, aware of how far that turtle can reach with its neck. So specifically like that's, well, okay. How about right there? I don't know about that. That, that, that right there, I don't know what I was thinking there. Look at the size of that. That turtle's head now clearly its attention is focused on my face but you can see I'm like this I'm leaning back and its neck is extended it can't reach any further than that but it's not going to bite all, my all face. it has to do is literally just go uh. right and at that point if I saw its head moving I, I would have moved my hand out of the way but I don't know I think in that moment I just thought of ooh dynamics of the shot grab some of the environment place it next to the turtle's head so you can see the algae that's in my hand it's also growing on and, the sand and in all fairness this was well before the famous time when you got your thumb bit off by a turtle yeah that the top I, of the thumb. I learned yeah. an incredible lesson that day when we were filming Dragon Tales and the top of my thumb got bit off yeah very bloody episode yeah I went through a little bit of super glue patch it's back up right it's all good though still got your thumb dome. yep and that's how he stands so camouflaged. And my backpack okay, so got destroyed in this episode too. Like really I went into the water with the backpack. About the snapping turtle from any other turtle. Look at how it's big the he is. Of the yeah. shell. I mean, oh, he's spilling out of his shell. And People don't realize. I don't think you guys realize how big this snapping turtle is. And they he, do make those oh, dragon noises. That's why these with his horrible breath that comes out of their gut. With these incredible dinosaur-like qualities. All these scales, I remember when we weighed um, him that day. I think he was 53 pounds, 53 or 54 shell, pounds. That bite force. So that bite didn't. Claws, no, that didn't say. seem to phase me at all. But yeah. that that was. I mean, if that turtle had got my arm in its mouth, it would have crushed the bone. Like it would have yeah. been like game over, scene over. Would have okay. taken like a piece. With it would have easily taken a chunk out of my Yikes. arm. We would have been on our way to the hospital. I stopped it right here because uh, I just wanted to point out that we. It was only me shooting this video. Yeah. Uh, you guys will notice that there's different camera angles uh, that we got after the fact. So a lot of this video is actually shot out of sequence. Mm -hmm. We had to. We had no choice. We didn't have Mario with us back then. Right. So um, I don't know if you guys noticed that or not, but some of the camera angles from the presentation are moving around. That's because from our filmmaking background, we right. knew we got to get these set up B-roll shots. So you'll notice Coyote's mouth is covered. You can't really tell what you're saying. But you were like, talk yeah. like you're presenting. Yeah. It will look <laughs> like we're in the same scene. Yeah. And it'll also make it look like we have a huge camera team with us. Right. It was one director, one shooter, which is you, both hats, mm -hmm. and one presenter, animal catcher. That was me. And editor. You actually edited this I video. did. I edited this video, too. For what you guys may not know is that for a lot of the first season of Breaking Trail, I did the initial edits and then our our now full-time senior editor, Chris, would come in and help me clean up the episodes yeah. and, you know, sp make them spiffy and better because I was not that <laughs> good of an editor. I think you're pretty good. I'm the king of this wetland. Good looking. Yeah, I had to be creative back boy. then. You can notice and the I light changes in between some of those shots, too, if you look yeah. really carefully. Of size, the males get quite a bit larger than the females. And then Still the a pretty great little camera. Though. It was, yeah. for, for back in 2014, before the wave of 4K. Tail. Can you see that from the side there? Boy, things they have changed. They these big scutes along the back of their tails. Look at that. And that's about... Man, you know, I have to say, just from someone who really... I didn't grow up around snapping turtles like you. I still think that the snapping turtle tail is one of the like most prehistoric-looking attributes to this animal. Like, it looks like a dinosaur. Yeah. 
I mean, they certainly have gone uncelebrated, in my opinion, mm -hmm. really since, you know, we really have put a focus on Snapping Turtles with a lot of our episodes. But, but even still, like, you can't go to the toy store and find, like, a stuffed animal no. or a, a toy rubber Snapping Turtle. That's, like, what I wanted more than anything as a kid. Mm. So the next best thing, I guess, was to get out into the swamps and ponds. and Maybe we should make some. Toy turtles. Toy snapping turtles, stuffed animal snapping turtles. Actually, what I think would be cool and a lot safer is to make like a pool float so the kids could go in their pool and catch a rubber snapping turtle as compared to like never go out into the wild and try to catch a real snapping turtle, guys. So maybe we'll make like the pool version or something. He said safer than kids jumping in the pool. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Wait, we're not jumping. You got to be in the pool and catch the turtle in the pool. All right, let's All get right, back to the Historic looking as you can get for a reptile that lives here in Ohio. All that algae. Now, okay, it's pause that, pause face. that. Back that up a little bit. All right, all right. I look at that, that is finger way too close yeah, to that, a snapping That's turtle. how you get the tip of your finger. Bit that was Coyote's super risky days. We have to get people to watch the shows and right. like do stuff where it's like, man, he's getting his finger really close to that turtle. Now, I did know turtles really well, but again, looking back to that whole, oops, you got your thumb bit off by a snapping turtle at one point. I guess today was not the day to learn that lesson. So wait, these so. were the risky days? Like two weeks ago, you were 30 feet up in a tree catching a monitor lizard. Well, I, that's not the same kind of risk, I guess. I mean, I guess <laughs> I felt like I really needed to push the envelope yeah. here to get people to be like, this is an intense nature it's series. It's pretty risky, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, fair <laughs> enough. Gee, that's growing on his face. Now, when he's underwater, his head... There's those now, awesome underwater shots. You got these shots. I did. I swam with the turtle to get these shots. I, I, I love these shots because it, it really shows how well camouflaged these animals mm -hmm. are underneath the water surface. I mean, if, if you didn't know you were looking at a turtle and I were just to show you a still of that, right. you may just think that that's an algae covered rock. Right, you can kind of see an eyeball yeah. a little bit. It looks like it almost is photoshopped in there or something. But yeah, like I remember the day that we caught this turtle, which we'd named Big Daddy, and I was like, I have to swim with this animal. Most people are like, wait a minute, you were swimming in a pond full of algae and mud and grime and probably some leeches. But and it does smell. It, it's, yeah. It stinks, but you know, just getting to be immersed in nature with this animal, the biggest snap turtle I'd ever caught. I was like, I have to get in there. The water's relatively clear. I think I can get us some pretty epic shots. Yeah, and you did. Still some of uh, my favorite underwater shots mm -hmm. you've gotten to this point. It's like a floating rock, and that's they can awesome. really that. slowly project that forward. <laughs> has like a hairdo. And as a fish gets closer, that's when they <laughs> snap, and he's got dinner. Respect. Was that jump one cut? Thing that was a weird cut. I don't know what I was doing there with, with the editing. Snapping turtle, you get complacent for Didn't just take me a out second, of it. and you're going home minus one finger. Wow, that was my coolest shot. experience. I remember that. You can see the reflection of us, me filming, and you in the background planet. watching. I'm sure that you guys have a bunch of questions. This is when we used to it's really be like, write in the comments, write in the comments. Yeah. Leave your comments and your stories below. We could get some good stories off this too. Now people just write in the comments. Yeah. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Right. Listen to that old pause it for a yeah, second. The like old be clean. brave, stay wild. It was just, <laughs> uh, I think that was probably like the third time I'd ever done it, but yeah. we were like, we have to have this outro slogan, and that was very rigid, very be brave, stay wild, we'll see you on the next adventure. Yeah. We were like, it was a little let the turtle go. I mean, now it's become so much more of like, point to the audience, you know, yeah, it's become such a tagline for the show. There's a cadence to it now. Yeah, you definitely see my early rookie days of yeah. line delivery with all of this as well. <laughs> But still holds up. Like yeah. I, I enjoyed watching this. It's yeah. fun. Here we go. This was the release. And this was actually okay. So we that was There's actually no I think we about. shot that out These of sequence because I'd done the underwater shots first, the and world. then that was the actual all, final release animals. of the turtle. Right. In part, Some other B-roll shots of Cornelius, who's another one of the big turtles out there, which you guys know from Dragon Tales. It's Is it from like some sizzle reels that we shot? I remember that day where I ran a dove into those lily pads, and I wasn't diving for anything. We were like, let's just get a really like intense action shot of you running in the water and diving headfirst into the lily pads. Yeah. I don't know why. We wouldn't do something like that today. We wouldn't be like, just do, go do run diving and jump shot. You we know? wanted to make sure it was exciting. Right. You, and, know? you like, know, well, at that time, we were so heavily influenced by Man vs. Wild and Bear Grylls and I like mean, the heavy intensity action that that show was. You know, and I think at this point in time, we were still trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. You know, it was very early days. We didn't really have like, you know, the formula, so to speak. Not that every video is the same, but right. we just didn't really understand the dynamics of like how to shoot a video efficiently yet. So we were shooting more footage than we needed. Mm -hmm. And thankfully we were doing that because if you watch a video like this, 
it's really not just the moment. There's a lot of other shoots involved that really make the video well-rounded and mm -hmm. feel like a big production. So right. looking back, I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty proud of us. Like yeah. we, we still had a, the chops back then. So well, with our like you said earlier, we, we have a filmmaking background, storytelling background. So it was how do we take you know a larger concept of like an hour-long animal program and condense it down into five minutes? Because if you guys notice, you'll see the little animalist logo in right. the upper corner. And one thing a lot of people don't realize is that we did this show completely on our own. It was right. Discovery Digital Networks that distributed it for us. Yeah. And you know, we were part of the Animalist channel at the time and, and launching our own YouTube channel. It was an amazing time and an amazing experience yeah. and, and such a leg up that we got from having this digital distribution platform. Right, and we had no subscribers no. when this came out. Like literally zero, zero. subscribers. And I think uh, at the by the end of the first week we had something like 30 subscribers. And right. I remember us like talking like, man, like this is really gaining steam. Right. <laughs> I think with, like the episode may have had like 30 to 50 views at that point. I was so yeah. excited. I was like, except you know, probably at least half of these are our friends, yeah. and us be like, guys, watch our first video that's yeah. out. Yeah. But we love doing it. And yeah. I think I think that's why this all this was able to even happen in the first place is because we we genuinely enjoy making wildlife videos. Right. And. I still have just as much fun making today as I did back then. And uh, yeah, it was really cool to actually take a trip back down memory lane. Right, it's pretty crazy that we went from filming episodes in our backyard here in Columbus, Ohio, to now, as of the filming of this video, getting ready to leave for South Africa, which is yeah. gonna be one of the biggest trips we've ever taken. But when it comes to this Base Camp series, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. There's gonna be more episodes like this. We've got four others that are episodes we have picked to talk about. But right. what I think is important is actually getting you guys, the Coyote Pack, to tell us what episodes do you guys want us to review a second time and, yeah. and dig into in more detail? Yeah, Base Camp's supposed to be like an open format. Like, you know, we're, we're gonna take suggestions, answer questions from the audience, we're gonna give you guys updates when we can. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just uh, have a lot of fun when we're not out in the field and, and keep that conversation going. And I think, you know, just like the very first episode we had of Breaking Trail where we can look back on and be like, man, that was kind of clunky. Why were we doing that? Why would we do this? Even shooting this first episode of Base Camp, yeah. you always learn as you practice. And as you go on, things get better and better. So we're always open to the comments and constructive criticisms from the Coyote Pack. And I guess at this point, with that said, should we do an outro? Mm. Right? Is that, it's time for the outro. Okay. I mean, we're kind of at the end of it, right? right. So I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. And I guess your name oh. too. Oh, let's hear trouble one, one more time. <laughs> Whoops. I'm Coyote Peterson. And I'm Mark Vins. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. There we go. But we'll get better at it. You know. right. I need more coffee. Yeah. Good take though. If you guys enjoyed this first installment of Base Camp, make sure to go back and watch the episode that started it all, Diving for Snapping Turtles, where we got up close with one angry mud dragon. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure.